This is a lathe rose engine. It's designed to cut different shapes and patterns into wood or metal. This particular rose engine is a made number 5 rose engine and it probably comes with a quite hefty price tag I would imagine. In this video I'm going to not make this rose engine because that would take me a couple of years. But let's take a look at something else. This is the Yahoo ornamental turning device. It is made in Germany and I'm not sure if it is still made currently. However, like the Rose engine, it is designed to cut patterns and designs into wooden items. As you can see here, there are many different patterns and a lot of variety you can do with this ornamental turning device. Now these are the parts for the ornamental turning device. I apologise, they're written in German. But on the left we have the substructure that clamps the turning device to your lathe bed and gets it to the right height for your spindle. Second is the XY cross slide and that one there looks like an off the shelf cross slide. The third item is a small rotary table and this rotary table can stand up on its end as well. The white part is an adapter that bolts to the rotary table and the chuck screws on to the thread. That is something I'll have to make. The last two parts are a small one and a half inch boring bar and a tie back for that boring bar. As you can see, I've been shopping. There are a few things that I have to make. So one is that substructure. However, I have bought a standard XY table here. Now I have identified an issue that I'll have to fix during the video. I've also purchased a small rotary table and it does have mounts to stand up on its end. The chuck will be connected to the rotary table and I do have to make the adapter that goes in between here. Lastly, I have the one and a half inch boring bar and it does have a thread in there so I can tie it back in the spindle. The only issue is that this one is an imperial boring bar, so it's an inch. And I just have to remember that one millimeter is 39.37 thou when I'm using it. I'm going to start with the plate that interfaces the rotary table and the chuck. So there'll be a thread for the chuck to screw onto and the plate will be bolted down to the rotary table. Now the thread in the chuck is one and a quarter by eight TPI. So I'm going to be able to cut that on my larger lathe. Now I want quite a wide flange here so I can bolt it onto the rotary table quite easily. So I'm going to use this 80 millimeter round bar. It doesn't hurt to draw up a sketch. So as I said, the flange is 80 millimeter diameter and the thread is one and a quarter by eight TPI. And that's about 29 millimeters long. And what you don't see is a little nub on the other side and that nub will sit into the middle of the rotary table here. As always, quicker to chop off the steel using the grinder, but unfortunately I can't get right through so I have to revert back to a hacksaw. But that didn't take long to chop off. Then I clean up the faces in the lathe and I put a center in the end here because it's not held in the lathe by very much. Then I start turning down the outside and I need to get this down to around about 32 millimeters. So there's quite a few passes, there's a lot of material to take off. And that measured up, great. So the thread itself is around about 20 millimeters long. And you can see I've drawn two lines there. That's going to be a little gutter for the threading tool to run into. So I turn that little gutter out and down to the proper depth. We are almost ready for threading, but I first have to grind up a threading tool. So this is 60 degrees, and you can see I've biased it to the left of the tool. That's because I'm threading up to a shoulder. I have the freshly ground tool in the tool holder and I've cut the recess here 
so that the tool can go into that when I'm threading and I can stop the lathe before it goes into the end of the part. For threading I want to set this to 30 degrees. So there is a little problem with my lathe or the scale that's on my lathe for the compound slide. If I set it to zero I'm parallel with the spindle and if I come around to 30 degrees I'm 30 degrees off of parallel to the spindle which is not what we want for threading. We want to be 30 degrees perpendicular to our work. So I need to turn this round to being perpendicular and then come back 30 degrees, which is actually 60 indicated, but that's the 30 degrees that we need. Not all lathes have a scale like this, but there are many that do. So if you're threading with 60 degree threads, and you need your cross light at 30 degrees, make sure it is 30 degrees off perpendicular, not off parallel. Now I need to address the elephant in the room. I mentioned 30 degrees, and that is the cutting angle, the angle at which the compound slide will cut or move the tool into the work. But is that the right angle? I've heard of people using 29, 29 and a half, or zero degrees. So which angle is correct? Well I don't want to get too deep into threading in this video because it's not a threading video and there are a bunch of really good videos out there that explain a lot of the stuff and I will put all of these in the description so if you want to learn a bit more have a look at those videos. But basically any angle between 0 and 30 degrees will cut you a good thread that'll work. Mind you this is for a 60 degree pitch thread. So if you're doing something like Whitworth then it'll be some other cross slide angle. 0 degrees is plunging straight in. So both sides of that 60 degree tool that I have there in the tool holder will be cutting the thread pretty much the same on both sides. And because that's a form tool, there's going to be a lot of tool loading. So it's not advisable to do that in hard material like steel. Although you could do that with materials like plastic or even aluminium. If 30 degrees is used, then that is half of the angle on the tool itself. So basically you're sliding the right hand side of the tool parallel as you're driving it in at 30 degrees. So most of the cutting, or just about all of the cutting, is done on the left hand side of the tool. And as mentioned that works just as well. Now 29 degrees or 29 and a half degrees will also work just fine. It's just that a little bit of cutting will occur on the right hand side of the tool as well. If you're going back from 30 degrees to 29 and even if you go to 28 or 25 or whatever, the lower you go or the closer you get to zero, the more cutting will happen on the right side of the tool. But anywhere between 0 and 30 will create a good thread that will work. Now what you can't do is go over 30 degrees. If you do go over 30 degrees then the right hand side of the thread will start to become stepped and those steps will get larger and larger as you go higher in the angle and the thread will probably not work. Now I'm not sure where 29 or 29 and a half degrees came from originally, but I do presume it's a safeguard so that you do not go over 30 degrees. Because as I said, if you go over 30 degrees, then your threads can start to be affected. Anyway, that's all I'm going to talk about threading. Go and look in the description if you want to know more about this. These videos are really good and they've got good graphics and these guys explain it really well. So what I've done here, this mark is about zero and I've moved round to 29 degrees, which is just below that 60 degree mark there. So that's how confusing this scale can be. The next step is to make sure that your tool is aligned with the spindle or the work in the spindle. So I've got this flat on the work and the V is in line. This is a scratch pass, so we just make a little scratch, then we can check our thread with our thread gauge. 
I'm not going to go through all the threading. You've probably seen lots of videos of this, but it's basically back and forth until you get to the right depth. And the chuck will screw on there like that. This is running really true, so I'm very happy with this. I tidy up the end by putting a little chamfer on the end of the thread. I've flipped the part over in the lathe and I'm taking some off the back here. This flange didn't need to be so thick and this allows me to make a little nub here. And the nub will then go into the center of the rotary table. I try it on in the lathe to make sure it's a good fit before I take the part out of the chuck. The adapter screws into the chuck there like that and then this little nub fits into the center of the rotary table. The next step is to drill some holes in here for the T-bolts. I've only just marked these holes in the mill using the DRO because I can't drill right through the part the way it's set up. I take it out of the mill and over on the drill press I finish off those holes. So they basically get bolted on there like that. And then the chuck screws on. Out of curiosity I put a dial gauge on and this is moving about two one hundredths of a millimeter. So I'm pretty happy with that. The next step is to make this tie back for the boring head. This has a M10 thread in it. I was going to use some of the stainless bar but I don't have anything long enough. I need it this long here. So I just have to use this galvanized bar. That will work fine, I'm not too worried about that. Now the good thing is with this boring head I found these broken center drills and they work perfectly in here. So I'll be able to chop the ends off and re-grind them for the cutting tools that I need. I'll chop off that section of all thread. Here I'm making a thick washer and I'm making this out of aluminium little scrap I had left over. I'm drilling a 10 millimeter hole through there for the all thread to go through. I couldn't get my parting tool in there so I've just turned it round and I'm turning off until the right thickness. I tidy up with a little chamfer on the edge here. I've screwed the all thread onto the boring head and that's pushed into MT2 taper. On the other side we put our aluminium washer and another small washer and nut. We can lock that up and now we can give it a test. I'm winding this up to 5000 RPM. The rotary table is then bolted on to the cross slide. I've made sure it's parallel here on the back. I need to get the center height sorted out so I'm making a tapered piece that I can hold in the chuck and then I can bring that up with one in the headstock of the lathe. This will tell me what height base I need to make. And what I've done here is packed it up with some wood and steel. Now I know the thickness of the base that I need. The Yahoo tool used a piece of tubing, although I didn't have anything big enough for this. So I had to think about making a custom base. I'm making this out of some quarter inch plate here. It's about 130 millimeters long. I cut two of those and I have to trim the edge off so it's practically square. Then I cut off two pieces of 75 millimeter flat bar and these will be welded on to make a small box. 
that 75 millimeter flat bar is put into the mill and I'm cleaning up these edges so that they sit nicely on the other two larger pieces for welding. Before I weld it I need to drill and tap four holes here for the cross slide to bolt onto. And for the base of the box I need to drill a 16mm hole in the centre. The bolt fits in there pretty good. I've got it all set up and squared up ready for welding. So I'll start off with some tacks on both sides. And then some longer welds. I'll do this in the vise. Next I clean off all the excess welding to get it all nice and smooth. I need to make four quite thick washers. And this is a piece of rusty bar stock that a friend gave me from the wood turners club. So if you're watching tennis, thank you. And I cut off four of these washers here. So there they are, the four nice washers, and I'll blue those washers later on. I bolt the cross slide onto the box. Then I put it onto the lathe. This tells me how thick I need to make the base plate. And it's 14 and a half millimeters, and I don't have any steel that thick. So I improvise and I've got this 16mm flat bar, so I'm going to cut two pieces off and weld them together. I've ground the edges, so I've got some V's to fill up with weld in there. And I'm welding one side a little bit and then the other side, and I didn't think about this, but needed to put it in a box so I can get it there to weld. I basically do that all the way through. And then I take those plates off and weld the center up. But the same process, a bit of weld on that side and then turn it over and a bit on this side. This is just to stop it warping. Now I have to drill a 16mm hole down the center. And that's for that same bolt that will go through there. I need to flatten off both sides of the plate. And the issue I have here is my Y-axis doesn't give me enough room. So I've got this ledge which hasn't been milled, so I have to deal with that later. I've got it nice and flat in the vise again, and I just mill that ledge down. And that came out really good. The next step is to put a key in here that fits in the lathe bed. And I'm going to use this 50mm steel. I'll cut a piece off there. Each end will get welded and I'll need to put a 16mm hole in the middle. I cut that to length off camera and tidied it up on the grinder and this is the 16mm hole. I've bolted the piece onto the base plate and before I weld it I need to make sure it's nice and square with the bed. Put a clamp on the end there so it doesn't move. And then it's over to the welding table and tack on each end. It's just a guide so we don't need any big heavy strong welds or anything like that. The last part of the base is a nut and I'm using this one and a half inch by three quarter inch piece of steel. Again I've tidied that up off camera and I'm drilling a 14 millimeter hole. So I can tap this to M16. I'll finish that off by hand. The base plate fits in between the lathe bed. And then the rest of the unit sits on top of the base plate. And there's a single bolt that goes through the center. And of course we have our nut that I just made. Now while it's loose I can slide it along, it can also pivot, so that allows me to do angles at a later date. All I do is square up the base with the rotating part, and then I know it's in line with the spindle. Now that's pretty much all of the work done here, apart from painting it of course. But before I test it out, I need to make up some cutting tools. So that's what I'll do next, and then we'll give it a test out and see how it works.
I was going to use these 8mm centre drills, but I don't think I'm going to have enough length here. So I'm going to sacrifice a couple of these 8mm drill bits, and I have plenty of length on the end here. I did some searches on YouTube to find out how to grind these tools, and there wasn't a lot out there. But in the Yahoo video, you can clearly see the tool that they have there and the shape of it. The angle here is a lot larger than 90 degrees and it has a bit cut out at the top here with some relief down the bottom. The first task is to cut off the end of the drills here. Now this is something I did see on YouTube and you grind in the angle that you want your tool. Now I made a little block here to help with grinding the tool. It's just a square block with a 8mm hole in it and a grub screw. Here I'm just grinding a flat on one of the ends. I've now flipped the tool over in the holder and I'm grinding that big chunk that needs to come off the top. Once that's done we just need relief on the back. And of course we've got to do that on both sides. And that looks pretty good. This is the very first item that I'm doing here on the jig. I've just done a series of circles and then I've shortened the radius down a bit and then I'm putting a circle in those circles. Now that tool with a really wide angle is good for sort of chewing out a lot of wood but it does not provide fine detail work. So that second drill bit, I chopped that down and I've got a very acute angle here on this one. Then I ran some more. I took photos afterwards. And that's how those ones came out, which I think were pretty good. Well, that's the project pretty much finished. I have to do a couple of touch-ups, paint the base, blue the washers, probably blue the bolt and nut, and also the big plate here as well. Now I played around with a couple of different tool bits. You saw the wider angle and the very narrow angle. And they gave different results as you can see in here. So the narrow angle in the middle and the wider angle on the outside. Here's a table I made up which makes it easy to work out how many degrees between each circle. So it's basically whole numbers between 360. I'm going to call that project a success. There's obviously some more work to do in here and more playing around to work on different tools and different designs and patterns and things like that. But this was a fun project and this device is really easy to use so I think it'll be very useful. I hope everyone has a great day and once again thanks for watching.